Hi everyone, this is a new session where we get to, you know, talk to engineers, you know, pioneers everywhere around the world about their innovations, you know, about improving the engineering, you know, experience and what they can bring to the table to actually help countless number of engineers around the world uh, and, you know, needs no introduction. My dear friend, Chris Tudutui, how are you doing, brother? Hi, hello. Yeah, I'm doing well. So, so Krista is going to show us today, you know, a little something that he's been working on, something very useful, very um, uh, simple, something that makes, you know, developing and building software much simpler, you know, especially if you want to build something that is standard compliant. You know, what are you, what are you showing us today, Krista? Do you want to tell people what, what we're doing? Yeah, I've, I've, I've worked on a, a code scaffolder um, that will generate code in a um, standard compliant way. So. Um, I think about a year ago, I started off um, creating normal project and item templates for me to, to quickly generate the code. And then uh, I saw the session um, a, a, a couple of months after that, that you did with my brook. Um, and that, uh, yeah, it, 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 it triggered something with me because I had the, the project templates already, but I didn't have the TDD way of checking stuff in along the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, um, so, so this keen... is like a scaffolder, you're saying. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Now I was keen to drive adoption as well. So, um, for me, it was it, it was it was quite important to get brokers and foundation services generated quickly. So, um, because I wanted to to uh, get my work people on it as well. And uh, if I can't justify time spent on stuff, then uh, the change would not easily happen. So that's that's also what was the drive behind this. Nice. So in terms of investment of time, if I can, you know, so you're basically thinking if I can just generate, you know, these foundational, you know, components of any system, I can, you know, kind of expedite the process of delivering software and expedite the adaptation to the standard. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. That that has some, it's multifaceted yeah. kind of go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, um, I called it standardly. A friend of mine gave me the name and it, it worked quite well. Um, it's not something that would do everything for you. You still need to do a little bit of work for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so at the moment, the, the templates cover generating. Um, I've got a multi-project template that will get all the, the projects in a standard way. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's basically just shell templates, uh, um, projects, and so no placeholders or anything like that in there. Mm -hmm. And then nice. from that point forward, we, we, we start generating the code, we generate the brokers, we generate the foundation services, plus um, all the unit tests for that. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. We then generate the controllers, and uh, after the controllers, we can also generate the acceptance tests. Um, wow. wow, the whole nine yards, huh? Yeah. Everything so, end to end. Uh, so okay. so, so, so what, what, what I don't do currently is I don't generate any any um, entity models. Um, I, I generate the, the bare minimum, which is uh, the um, primary key on, on the model, plus uh, a couple of fields for the um, auditing. Uh -huh. but, uh -huh. but beyond that, um, developers will need to extend that themselves. So I've, I've not made provision to, to, to um, generate any object models yet. Um, and then obviously the unit test people will need to um, extend themselves. And then... Nice. Um, yeah. Hmm. Then it, other than that, it's just uh, regis registering your um, your 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 new code in Startup CS, and then you and you're good to go. Nice, nice. Okay. So, What's it called? Standardly. So so here's one question for you. You know this hmm. this still requires people to have an understanding of what the standard is, right? Like you can't just use the tool without knowing what brokers are and you know yes. how do we write these unit tests. Okay. Well, show us show us the magic. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, let me share my screen and then. Uh, um, this is exciting. I love it. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, uh, I think the first thing. First is I'll show the multi-project template. So at this stage, I'll create a new project. Okay. Um, immediately, you'll see I filtered on standardly at the top. Nice. Um, so you see this new uh, multi-project template that I've created. Nice. Um, I'm going to click on that. 
Now, with multi-project templates, there is a quirk that it, it does some funny thing in terms of folder structure. So I'm going to leave the, this box checked. Okay. Otherwise, I end up with a... The right way to do it. <laughs> yeah, uh, otherwise, right. we end up with a, uh, a funny folder structure. Yep. Um, I'm going to click Create, and then... Uh, Let's see. Okay, here we go. Visual Studio is opening on my other screen. Um, wow, look at that. You got the brokers, the models. Yeah. The, so, uh, wow. So okay. I'll ex extend that again. Um, so I think the important thing is to notice that uh, we've not got anything in here. If I click on program. Um, it's an empty file, kind of. It's, it's, uh, it's just an uh, empty file. Uh, nice. so, same for the provision. Um, and unit test doesn't have anything in it. It has the in main entry point, though. That's good, right? That, yeah. that means it's, it still makes sense. Yeah. Quite, quite. Um, in terms of startup, um, we've only got the bare minimum in there. So all the normal stuff like Swagger and the controllers. Yes. Um, I did do an a entry for the service broker. Mm -hmm. um, Storage, I, yeah. I think. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I'll, I'll take that out so that that can be um, scaffolded uh, okay. from, 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 from the start. But uh, for the moment, that, that is registered there. Um, and the reason, reason it's there is that um, I sort of started looking at, at, at the OSSS project and um, I had ident ASP.NET identity in mind. So I scaffolded all, all those uh, entities automatically already. Gotcha. Um, and that's why they're in there, because I didn't want that overhead to go on to developers. Um, but I guess we'll see where we're going to go when we see your next security video. Okay. And I'll ref refactor that bit out. Um, so again, storage broker, um, nothing in there apart from the, 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 the defaults. Just the um, basics, yeah. I've, I've done bits of to-dos in there where people can refactor. It is a task for them to do, to do, to do that. Okay. Um, but I've not done any folder structures for anything else like services, uh, orchestrations or, or processing or anything like that, because that should be generated as you evolve your code. Nice. Um, so I think at this stage, I'm just going to create a Git repository because uh, to check in code in the standard way, we, we, we need a, a, a repo behind that where we can check it in. Nice. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to create an Make it public, Christo, so people can, yeah. so I can put the link in the video description. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that repo is now created. Um, I think before we go a bit further, let me quickly just show um, uh, uh, the extension is installed now. So um, the first thing that you'll see after you've installed the extension, you've got the standard menu on the extensions. Nice. Um, we've got a menu item here for generating the code. Um, another menu item for, for the template folder. So if people want to go look what the templates look like, you can click on that. Nice. It'll open up Windows Explorer and just the license file. Nice. Um, and then as part of that, um, there's a, a, a option setting as well. Um, don't know why it's not updating. Yeah, there you there go. Goes. Yeah. Um, so I've just done a bit of basic configuration. So uh, the scaffold will allow you to, uh, to set whether you want to load the editor config by default. You could ignore a license file if, if those things is not present. Nice. Um, there's a, a, a copyright uh, uh, text box where, nice. uh, with a template. Um, and then you can specify your, your main branch. Um, nice. And then in the copyright, you see that display name there. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that brings in the name that you've configured here so you don't have to go and change your things all over the place and the same with not, nice. uh, li licensing. Nice. Um, and then we've got a uh, GitHub username, which uh, is being used for our branching strategy. And then um, I've sort of started with locations as well. Um, the idea is here for, for translation so that if people want to specify a different name for each of these. Nice. Um, then we can eventually get to that. Um, but yeah, that, that's it in terms of configuration. Okay. So I think the first thing people need to do is just fill in um, the display name and the GitHub username. Otherwise, they will have to 
um, complete that every time they, they want to scaffold code. Um, then if I right click on my project, um, on add, we've got that standard, same, same menu item that I saw, uh, showed earlier is up there yep. as well. Yep. Um, or you can use the, the shortcut key, which is the one I use most, which is control shift F4. Nice. Um, so yeah, so let's start on, on the build project. Um, I'm going to press control shift F4, um, and that's going to bring up the, uh, form for us where you can pick what you want to generate. Nice. Um, so you can search on templates. So if I do build, uh, we can see the infrastructure project. The build project. Up. Nice. Um, nice. I think, I think we'll start with that one anyway. Yeah. Um, and just to take you guys through the UI, um, the project is is, is, is is named in this way. So that's that's how we expect it. So if you've got an API project, um, we expect that your unit test will be a suffix of test unit, same with test acceptance, and then same for infrastructure build and infrastructure provision. Um, I think you want to rename this to GitHub integrations or something yeah. like that. So, yeah, so we'll change that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to change that soon. Um, then um, I just want to show the other tab configuration. If you didn't fill in that um, options before, you would have had to come here and complete that. You can override any of these if you want to do a once off override. Nice. But, but what I found once it's there, I generally don't touch it again. Um, a bit of a disclaimer, just because we run scripts, people need to know that uh, scripts could be harmful. And um, as this is a code scaffolder, I think uh, people need to be mindful that uh, they can tank, tank their experience if they just use this and they don't understand stuff. Nice. So nice. Um, it's more important that people know um, how to write the code and stuff and then use this as a, a productivity tool to supplement it. Nice. Um, so yeah, I'm going to click Generate. Uh, code and um, what's happening in the back now um, I've got a bunch of uh, uh, yeah. command windows executing scripts in the back to generate uh, let me just quickly uh, all the pieces the, did you have to define a model for it or like right now you're generating for these projects like inside these projects or do you have to generate a model against oh so you already have model name uh, Build. Okay, got it. Got it. Yeah. Mm. So for the um, okay, that that looks like it's completed. So I'll quickly nice. show, show that uh, in a second. So for the build project, because it's a reserved thing, you can't mm -hmm. change that name. Um, yep. This the same for for, for, for the plural. Yeah. Um, I'm just quickly going to drag other window in here. Um, let me close this. Um, so what you'll see is that that project just got generated. Nice. Um, and then we already see three pull requests. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> so, um, the first thing it did, it, it generated the editor config, which is fine. Your, your coding standards. Um, yep. uh, it added the, the licensing file. And then if we look at the infrastructure build project, we can see it picked up the build file and is actually um, doing its bit of work in the background. Um, wow. Just to save time, I'm just going to merge that. Yep. And uh, let me do the other one ones as well. And then I can show. Uh, nice. Um, sorry, I didn't want to do that. This is crazy. <laughs> you're, you're, you're initializing the automaton era. Yeah. You were. <laughs> go, so ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. If, if we look at the build now where that project was empty before, we can see, see the nice. code there. Nice. Um, so again, people can do a, a, a Modification. Goes it up if, if yeah. they want to and all that. And then at the bottom, you'll notify that the branch has actually changed as well. So um, it, 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 it wasn't that branch that we were, were before. Uh -huh. um, let's do um, 
some brokers. Um, so I'm going to very quickly do a daytime broker for us as well. Again, daytime nice. broker is a reserved name. Nice. Um, and also one thing I want to show, because this is a public repository, you can check that in as a draft branch as well if you want. Nice. Um, nice. So um, just take that off and generate that quickly again. Um, so this is literally just writing the code and making the git commit and then making the git push all in just one click of a button. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. I can't uh, get past that window yet. Um, so, okay. So this is finished now. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, one one thing that we see uh, is that we need to add the um, broker to startup CS. I, yep. I didn't do that. I didn't want to fiddle with regex and all that um, yep. because uh, people's solutions can differ very quickly depending on how they they refactor it and and do stuff. So um, and then it just shows that uh, we've got that pull request and that was the branch for it. And so, and 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 Chris, this is a. This here, I see here, link the pull request to related issues. So if there's open issues, does it go and find it, or do you have to define it, you know, in the window? Do you see that third, third from the top kind of point? That yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So, so at the moment, it's it's a manual thing. So let me bring that in. Mm -hmm. um, if if we go to pull request again, we'll see that daytime broker is there. Nice. Um, De depending on your permissions, you can either go and link it here on the right hand side uh, uh, with your issues, or you can edit that um, nice. and say it closes um, whichever issue. But um, I haven't done that automatically, and I think I'll show you on the next one why. Um, yeah. I've just merged that on, that one as well. I'm going to press Control Shift F4 in. And then um, login brokers is next. Uh, so, so login brokers is the first one that, that's got a, 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 a bunch of activities to it. So you've got the various log levels that's been created now, and each one is their own branch. So yeah. I think what got difficult, if, if we had to do automatic issue linking, is um, on the UI, how would I link that to the right uh, PR? Right. So, so I've left that that as a as a, as a manual task. Okay. Uh, um, I mean, I mean, it's not a big deal. Like, like you know, the heavy lifting of actually writing the code and generating the code and putting it in place. This is what this tool is doing. This is this is beyond yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's almost done. Okay, so that's done. So you can see for this one, it generated a lot more in terms of nice uh, pull requests. Nice. If I close that window and we have a quick look, we can see the daytime broker is there from yep. before. Um, we can now see all these uh, uh, methods Lo for the logging. Log yeah. Logging, and th they're fully done. Um, and then if I go back to uh get up get up there it is nice we can, we can see all of these um nice nice i'm not gonna wait for the build to finish um i'm just gonna quickly merge them so that we can yeah get through them um yeah so the next one is then um the broker mm -hmm. uh, storage broker uh so now you're going to generate for an actual model, maybe a student yeah. model or something. Yeah. So let's okay. let's do, take student. Uh, nice students, maybe. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So it warns you if you if you've got the same. <laughs> um, nice. <laughs> and uh, see, this is this is software craftsmanship right there. Like you put in the time to make sure that it actually, if it's similar. To the singular man this this is the kind of detail that really makes software worth its while i'm sorry chris go ahead continue yeah no no worries um 
and that that will now substitute everything with uh, in, in my templates with students and students where needed. Nice. Um, so brokers is also the first one where you have to do a bit of work. Um, yep. As I mentioned before, I I, I generate a, a skeleton model with the primary key and the audit. I'll show that. Um, I, I was just going to ask you, like, you know, uh, how does it know what I, what I want to put in a student model, like an ID and a name and stuff like that? How does it know, right? But uh, yeah. <laughs> you beat me to it. Let's <laughs> see what it does. <laughs> nice, nice. Man, you did. Yeah. You just did the work of like an hour worth of work in like five minutes. You know, just like yeah. that. Nice. It saves a lot of time. Yeah. It's almost done. It's a pity I can't show you the the. the, 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 the you, you you can see it pop up and disappear. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I see. It. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering like I what like is it actually doing the whole oh let's commit let's do a change and all that. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. It's, so uh, yeah, let's let's actually show you that as well. So uh, I'll bring that in again. Wow. So so I've got those PRs again. So the first thing we'll see is uh, I generated that um, model. Nice. So, so again, it's just the primary key, um, a little to do for people to extend yeah. the, their model. And then, then the um, just audit fields audit. and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, if I go back to the, 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 the others, all the CRUD um, operations. Mm. You can you can see how, how how they've been added and all that. Um, so so wait, it's building on top of each other. Like you're basically you know you're basically going and saying let me create all of these, but they're they're in sync already, so you don't yeah. have to run into conflicts. It's yeah. Just review and mer oh man, that's that's fantastic. So so so, so that, that that is a nice one because the the branches. Uh, build on each other mm -hmm. um I've, I've got that full full history um nice just in the code i want to show you that as well so be, because it's uh it's a sub we, yeah we, we, we've got configuration so if, yep. if, if if you add any fluent configuration to add yeah um like uh property links and stuff you can do that for, for now i'll just do a, a, a code clean on that yeah um on on the broker itself we've not got um any fluent configuration but you can add that method in there and then um in terms of the model we can see a uh, student is there um nice. and then uh let's let's add um just going to copy a snippet for us so that we can do something here at least to show that yeah um okay uh And the student model, okay. Uh, and I forgot one thing as well. Yeah, is uh, the migration, yeah. Migration, okay. I never remember is it add migration or migrations, but. This one looks like it's working, so I, I think we're on we're in the clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's just done it, and it's just moaning about that um, yeah. it's been at these things. But in general, my I can see my my migration file is there. Nice. Um, and then uh, I'm just going to prove the. Uh, request as well so we can see that has come in and updated it yeah 
Okay, we have a we have a migration file. We have it all. Okay. And then uh, um, the next one we want to do is the um, foundation service. The service, yeah. Wait, you're gonna generate a foundation service with, yep. with everything in it? <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, let's let's see. So um, yeah, so we've got. Uh, Again, I had to put in student students, okay. and then uh, for this one, if you didn't have a unit test project, that mm -hmm. that will turn up Amber. We create it for you. Yeah, uh, it, it won't create it uh, for such, but it, it will it will create a warning. Um, gotcha. Be, because the multi project template already scaffolded that for us, it's not something that I have to worry about. But uh, interesting. If 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 you wired up projects before, then. Uh, your naming convention was a bit off, then I don't want to just create projects that people need to get rid of. I think they can, they can address that themselves. Nice. Um, generate okay. That Moment well. of truth. Is it going to do the whole <laughs> a day worth? It's just going to do a day worth of work in like a minute. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. This is crazy. Okay. Right. It would be interesting to see, like, the commit history. You know, something tells me it's going to do that. But I don't know. We'll see. You know, this this is very, very interesting. You know, man, this is, you know, it's like a, this is a precursor for the age of automation for, you know, standard compliant projects, you know. It should be close now. It's busy with the retrieve students. I, I can see it doing a lot of things in the background, like all these little um, console windows popping up. Okay, wow. It, it is really doing everything for you, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You know what would be cool, Chris, if the whatever is happening in these console windows shows up on this on this window. There it is. Look at that. Yeah. Wait, you didn't just generate for one operation. You covered all CRUD operations, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. No, no way. So, okay. <laughs> Let's so, see. Um, yeah, so we've got that that info there. Um, let's have a look at the the projects. Um, so we can see in the unit test project, it's now created the foundation services. We can see. Whoa, OK. Uh, every single unit test for foundation services is in there. Um, if we do uh, test explorer, that should uh, run and pass all the tests for us as well. It just generated 43 unit tests, just like that. Nice. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The just it is always a bit slow when you want it to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So so we we obviously got uh, all our passing tests there. Yeah, but but um, we've got that uh, validations to 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 amend. Yeah. Um, so because we added uh, a name extra and fields, yeah, yeah. Um, we 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 need to edit our validation test. I don't do any any special uh, logical validation test, but. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, I think it's last name. Yeah. Um, we can do those. Nice. Oh, 
Okay. Um, so yeah, at this point that the test will fail because we haven't got those in yeah. our. So I'm not sure what the process is on this one, Asan. Do we do a, pass, a failing test or do, do we just do a... So uh, you can, yeah, you can make a failing test and then yeah. you go back and make it pass. Mm. So single arrow, fail, all uppercase, and then... You know, I wasn't you... sure if we do a code drop for the whole modification as one. No, no, this is legitimate. You're adding a yeah. new a new business logic piece, right? You know, new validation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then... Uh... On yeah. uh, uh, foundations, students, everything is generated. Everything is just taken yeah. care of. <laughs> okay. So, so again, um, first name, last name. Uh, okay. You're probably going to need the rule, right? Because you don't yeah. have the... Mm -hmm. Okay. And then... Uh... You, have a, you have an I last name on line 16 at the very end. Just take the I behind the L. Or last name. Uh, oh yeah. Also, there's a D at the end of the. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Cool. And then uh, we need a rule. The mm -hmm. rules. I'm just gonna. So that validation rule is there. Yep. And then um, we can jump back to uh, the test. Test. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's our passing test. Looks good to me. Pass. Okay. Let me just merge that for us as well. So you can see on wow. the wow, wow, dude, that's the whole history, everything. Yeah. It looks like you're like, so this is one interesting thing that I'm noticing here. You're going and saying, okay, you still have to make some decisions which require you to understand the standard, you know, but you know, the semi redundant things like handling SQL exception or DB update exception and any of that, I'll take care of all of that for you. You just yeah. focus. Wow, there's there's a there's a nice subtle kind of message there in the application yeah. itself. Go ahead, go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so I don't envision that I, that I would go uh, in terms of code generation be, beyond foundation services because I think the use cases vary too much it when gets, you start yeah. looking at what? processing <laughs> and orchestrations. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's yeah. also why people should should know the standard because they're going to need that knowledge for processings and orchestrations and uber orchestrations or, yeah or, yep. or if you or if you're going to start playing with eventing then then you would need that yep um so yeah if, if, if you don't have the experience it's, it's good to to get that upfront knowledge and then it, it's it's an easy way for you to just change once you've once you've got that uh understanding already nice um so the next okay, one we controllers want, then controllers yeah <laughs> yeah Nice. The whole thing, end to end, do all the CRUD operations, everything. Nice. <clears throat> yeah. So if, if if your microservice or something just consists of this, then then, then your work is done. practically done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the only other thing that I don't do on on controllers where people will need to do. A, a bit of work is do the screenshots to show that your controllers is working. Um, <laughs> that's right. I, you need a screenshot. I, I, that's right. <laughs> I was I was I was inclined to um, do the acceptance test close to the controllers because that 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 sort of in a way um, shows that your controllers DI is wired up and all that. But um, 
as you've mentioned before, controllers can exist without the acceptance test. So I've not done that. So that that screenshots is still a manual task on the nice. on the check-ins. Um, so yeah, so that we've got that. Um, the only other thing that we need to do is um, I didn't really follow the steps for the brokers and the foundation service. So um, in terms of the DI, we need to do that now after the fact because I didn't do that uh, for the, the injection. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah. So if we go to this, I've got a code snippet already, so I'm just going to uh, okay. put that in. Yep. That's And then uh, I'm just going to click on uh, merge that uh, branch. And then uh, the next thing is uh, the acceptance tests. Nice. And yeah, this is this is the lot in terms of um, templating. Um, the one that I didn't show is it does the, the provisioning as well. Um, I, I, I need... forgot. Yeah, I forgot to ask you. Does it also add the settings for like a local database for you when you're using a storage broker? Or do you have to generate that? <laughs> Excuse me. It, it, it adds a default connection string. Um, I'll, I'll show that quickly. Um, All I'm right. Just waiting for the console app to uh, release the window. Finish. Yeah. But yeah, it was a, it was a fun project. Um, it's it's a very it, it, very fun project, very useful project, extremely too, especially for people who are kind of pressed against time, you know, or want to kind of get something off the ground or drive adaptation, just like you said. Yeah. I, again, this is a precursor for the age of automation for the standard. You know where there's still some things that you can't you just can't automate we don't have the technology yet but this is this yeah. is fantastic mm -hmm. um so yeah so except this this you can see that it's now actually where we had nothing before it it added the student tests the brokers um again it added the um except this test specific model so one thing that we need to do is update that uh uh, uh, model. I'm just going to take those properties from from here. Otherwise, the acceptance test will fail. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, models. Yep, there it is. And then. Um, So we can see moment this. of truth. This shows what? everything. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> what do you <Fine>. think? <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. It's creating the database and everything. Wow, Chris. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's. All five operations, unit, acceptance, oh. nice. <laughs> yeah. This is um, this is beyond beautiful. You know, this is, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I'll, I'll, yeah, you can talk. I'm just going to bring up uh, one of the um, uh, pull requests um, yeah. just to show you um, that as well. So. In terms of the templating, I, I pretty much uh, follow a snapshot type type mm -hmm. way of, of doing this. So um, I created the template, made sure that it was working and all that. Yeah. And then um, if we go to extensions and bring up the template folder. Um, uh, 
my windows are sticky. Um, you can see there's all the uh, the things. I'll, I'll go into uh, storage brokers. So um, <coughs> each number is a is a, is a commit. Nice. And nice. Um, so if you think of the, the the process we followed when we created the broker first, is we created the the storage the, broker the, by itself. Yep. Yep, the root files, yeah. Mm -hmm. The next one is um, I created the um, the model for mm -hmm. that. And it looks something like that. Nice. So I've got a replacement dictionary that replaces all the stuff for us. Um, and then it, it, it just builds on that. So if I show you in terms of the template then, um, uh, we've got a name tells uh, the UI what it is, the basic description. Um, as the UI allows uh, filtering and all that, we just say that this type is API, so it's not a front-end project. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is what's required. So we need an API project to create a broker. Um, if we look like later on at the foundation service, then we can see that that starts requiring the um, unit test project as well. Um, and then We've got a, a bunch of tasks to make uh, this thing complete. So uh, to, to, to do this broker, we've, we've got, uh, what's it, five tasks or five PRs. One is the uh, for, for, for the create. Um, we can see that I create my branch, I set my folder. Um, a bit of scripting to, to, to get the right branch. Um, install the new get packages. Nice. And, then, and, and then there's a script amount to go read the template. Um, it will then do a, a, a variable replacement on that and then save it to that location. Um, mm -hmm. For the brokers, we don't override it because if, if you create another model, you don't want to uh, go and remove the code that you've just added to on model creating. So. Um, you only... made it you made it very simple like understanding how it works in and of itself is super simple chris like like yeah. i i thought this is going to be quite difficult to understand like how it's working maybe i thought to myself okay he, he, he might have added like a lot of like different you know mm. uh iterations maybe a list in memory or something it's all configuration based it's all configuration based yeah um, and I didn't do any 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 fine replace with uh, registry uh, uh, regis edit like that because that'll just add extra complexity. Um, yeah. Because standard is still evolving. I didn't want to go down that route. Yep. But yep. Is, uh, and and then um, once the file actions is done, we do the migrations for the initial create, um, and then uh, we do the commits, and then when it's done, we push it, and then we move on to the the next one, which is uh, the data model. Mm -hmm. So for that, I just read the thing. And then again, it's a repeating pattern to go through the steps. So you either read a template, replace the stuff, or you do a bunch of scripts or, or combination of the, of the two. Um, and as it is at the moment, that folder structure mm -hmm. uh, gets scanned for any template or JSON files. So even if you don't have any coding knowledge, but you've got an existing template, you can pretty much go and uh, sorry um, take all of these because if you click into this, you can you can you can see the the code for that file. So you can you can create your own code files. Um, nice, nice. And, and 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 extend this with your own templates without having to have any knowledge about standardly. Um, nice. I I use the um, default uh, replacement dictionary similar to the um, uh, project item template so there's not that much of a deviation but i've i've got a few of my own yeah but um that that is documented so i think it's fairly simple um, um yeah so it should be it's, easy it's it's, it's uh, very very it's very simple to understand like this is this is another kind of mind blowing moment you know like i i thought this was going to be super complicated and and chris is is standardly open source it's open source, yeah. So, so, so anyone can just you know clone it and learn how it works and use it today. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I hope it's 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 a project that uh, the whole community can can contribute to. Um, nice. I'm not. I don't want to 
take ownership uh, for this myself. I know McBrook is looking at uh, snippets, and uh, Ahmed has is, is, is fixed some bugs already. So nice. um, I think, yeah, as, as the standard evolves, we can, we can bring this in line. And I think uh, next step is to um, maybe do some client-side brokers and services for, 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 for Blazor. For Blazor. So, nice, nice. Um, Wow. Uh, yeah, that'd uh, be crazy. Like the whole so, UI with the back end. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um and then potentially um I don't I don't know I don't have that much experience with Blazor, but if you if you've got a standard master detail type view, we could even replicate something like that to yeah. to get uh, a front end going quickly. But um I, I was just I was just talking to, to Joshua McCall about this the other day, you know, building a a standard for UI, right? Or UI today is presented as an experience and as componentization as, you know, way too com more complex than it needs to be, right? Well, much more complex than it needs to be. Things can be much, much simpler. And this is not like some people reached out to me after that session and they, you know, with Josh and they asked me, said, are you, are you creating your own kind of uh, a UI, UI theme, right? For, yeah or framework and i said no this can apply to any ui theme or framework you know this is more about you know coherence and experience than you know i don't care whether your button has shadows in it or not i care more about how you're presenting an idea if you have you know incoming data that you want to collect or you want to render data as a grid or stuff like that what yeah. what what direction should you take basically so that's that's i think that'll be nice to have that yeah so, so, so Chris, here's another question for you. So, okay, so if if I have Visual Studio today, just from scratch, you know, and I want standardly to be available in Visual Studio, what should I do? Do I install it from the extensions? Is it available in the marketplace? How it, does it work? It is on the um, uh, marketplace. I think the marketplace is probably the best uh, place to go. Okay. Uh, let me bring that up. Okay. Quickly, and then I can show that. Uh, There it is. Um, nice. I think it's it's easier on the marketplace to, to, to get a little bit of extra information because there is some um, dependencies uh, or prerequisites that, that like uh, GitHub CLI commands. As that yeah. I use that to create the pull requests. Um, and then you need to be on the latest version of Entity Framework Core to do nice. the, the migration files. Nice. Um, I got stuck on that one. I was on version 6. 06 um so i had to dig out that command to to update it yeah um and then there's just a few screenshots to basically say what we've covered before leave that box ticked um and then uh how to cover the options um, nice so and, yeah i think i think and that, I, uh, uh, go ahead go ahead chris go ahead. yeah so i think definitely marketplace is the place to, to go for the install um, and then from then on, you can just do updates via your extensions in Visual nice. Studio. I think, you know, one one thing I would add, you know, to this would be like, you know, some additional capability where it goes and says, let me check for all the stable upgrades for all the libraries that your project is using and let me update all of them in one shot, right? That's That's another thing that, you know, is usually basically kind of maintenance work, you know, just to keep things up to date and make sure things are working and all that. Um, this is crazy, Chris. This is <laughs> this is a next level, right? Yeah. This... <laughs> yeah I, I think, I think, yeah, uh, uh, as you've, you've mentioned uh, some ideas now, I think it'll snowball now. And once people start using it, they'll, they'll, they'll let us know what, what other things they want to automate and we can look at that. I love um, it. So, yeah, definitely a nice, nice bit. Um, I think for 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 me the next bit or the the changes needed is um, I need to update the, um, the 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 provisioning service with the last bit you added in your previous video. Yeah. Um, yeah. I need to rename the build project to 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 the new GitHub integrations name. Yeah. And then I think um, maybe rejig the um, foundation services once once we know what we're going to do. Um, for security, because I think we're going to do that uh, uh, um, 
a security broker or something like that that we need to add somewhere. That's right. There's there's a there's so there is something that's incoming super soon. You know, I'm gonna make a video about this, which is, you know, there's there's token uh, tokens or or token security broker, which basically takes care of you know token refresh and all that kind of good stuff you know that happens behind the scenes when you leave the screen on for a while and you want to mm -hmm. take additional action but you know th with this series of security i'm going to try to kind of cover as much as possible for people so they don't have to like security is such a complicated it's presented to be complicated it doesn't have to be complicated but presented in a way that's you know way too complicated and it can be simplified you know for uh, for all intents and purposes, if you don't have security on your application, you know, your application might not be doing something super important, you know, in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, but also I have seen, like, if you see GitHub, GitHub does a model of security that I've never seen before. They basically, they say, oh, you can access all our APIs, but unless you have a token, you know, we will only limit your access to like 5,000 an hour or something like that. So it's like a hybrid security model where it goes mm -hmm. and says, you can only go that far, but once you want to go further, you're going to have to tell us who you are and why you're doing that, which is super strategic. This is this is the good stuff that I like to look at and and see yeah. how people are implementing their 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 guards or guardrails to protect their systems. But Chris, this is crazy. <laughs> I love mm. it. This yeah. is this is this is outside of this world. This is you know I look at this. This is a, such a turning point because. You know, a lot of people would come in and say, OK, I, I really love the standard. I really love working with it. But, you know, there's a lot of work there. Like I had this feedback from a, a, a friend of mine, you know, a mentee of mine. You know, he basically said, you know, OK, if I want to implement, you know, some 120 models for a big enterprise system. Right. That would take me quite a bit of work to kind of get it off the ground. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't need necessarily processing or orchestration. And I was just telling a friend of mine this yesterday, I was just telling them, you know, your your business logic actually starts, you know, beyond foundations. Like foundations is basically doing what every other application is doing. Yes, it knows a little bit about your model, which is a little bit of hint of your business logic. But once, but once you start doing processing and orchestration, coordination, management and stuff like an Uber management, this is where you start kind of scratching your head and be like, what do I really want my application to do? Okay, yeah. this is cool. Yeah, that, that, that reminds me as well. It it, it does uh, internal events as well. Nice. Um, so I think when you get to your lake house, we'll 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 add that as well. I, and um, I need to get so. that out the door really really soon because I even need it at work. You know, yeah. for some of my open source projects with mixed reality, we need to kind of start pulling you know Lake Q into the into the game and start implementing commands for labs and stuff like that. So this is going to be mm -hmm. also interesting so yeah I, I you know i what i always tell people is that well first of all there's a couple of things here chris you know just for the people watching again you know build something that you would use yourself chris too is using this stuff he's following the standard he's building systems according to the standard so this is something he thought can drive adaptation and something that can kind of expedite the development process for people of you who you know who don't know Christo, he's a, he's a, he's an engineering lead. You know he runs teams. You know in England and tries to drive impact through productization and you know software development, the whole cycle, as you may imagine. And he's just very humble and nice, but he's extremely smart and scary smart. You know at this point in time, you know. But the other thing is the you know uh, for people watching the you know so you're driving innovation. You you drive it through something you would personally need. I wouldn't write the standard if I need, didn't need it. But then I thought to myself, the difference here is when you need something, do you just do it for yourself or do it for every other person out there, you know, that can actually leverage these capabilities and leverage this work and actually collaborate with you, you know, especially in this open open space like the Internet, Internet today is available for everybody. So everyone gets to, you know, kind of collaborate and, you know, be able to participate in this nice, uh, you know, celebration that we have every day in the open source space. Right, Chris? Yeah. All right. So, so if anybody wants to help and contribute and stuff, yeah, it's an open source project. Um, so I'm going to put the links. Chris is going to give me the, these links. So, so Chris, you know, a link for your project that you just generated just to show people and a link for the marketplace and a link for the open source, you know, uh, repository so people can contribute. 
to this and kind of drive adaptation to it. Christo, you have uh, you have issues opened up in this uh, in this repository, right? Yes. Yeah. So or... there's there's a couple of bugs that we need to um, look into. So not 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 all the time the um, migrations is uh, being checked in via that script. So I need to look at that. But okay. um, I think my focus at the moment was to get as much templates out because I know the templates generate successfully and um, uh, I mark that issue as a minor because you, you have to do the manual um, model migration update anyway for, for your properties that you do. So um, I love but, it. Yeah, Ahmed has helped me with two bucks already. So um, we should be through them quite quickly awesome. and then we can start looking at uh, feature requests. Um, awesome. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we limit it to, to just what we do. I think we can look at the React templates as well. Um, it, it, it can cater for anything, really. So nice. I, nice. I think the community can all help, and then we can pull it out to something that, that uh, works for everybody. Love it. Love it. Mm. Thank you so much, Chris. This is amazing. I appreciate your hard work and effort into this, and I think this is this is a great start of something big, you know, and you basically the, the magic in this is the engine that can look at templates and start generating and creating messages and all that kind of stuff this is this is the core of it but you also have all these templates to tell people see here's a template go ahead and generate you know and you can build a project however you want to build it that's awesome anything else before we wrap up from your side no i think i'm good thank you for the time my son that's nice to share this off Christo, this is this is amazing. I love it. And of course, you know, um, you know, find us in the Discord channel of the standard community. You know, Christo, myself, and two hundred and I think fifty other engineers out there, you know, from all over the world, happy to come in and answer questions. And uh, in, probably now in your own favorite local language, you know, I see people from all over the place kind of doing that stuff. Um, uh, you know, innovation in, in, in and of itself is, is the true drive for us to kind of push the envelope forward. If you continue to do the same things that we've been doing like a couple of years ago, then we're not really growing. We have a super big problem in our, you know, uh, in, in our engineering processes. It's by nature, you know, growth driven. So, you know, uh, technology on in our industry doesn't really respect tradition. It respects you know, innovation and change and growth and evolution. So, and, and what Christo is doing today is basically that, you know, he's basically taking an idea, manual work that we do today and trying to push it to the next level while maintaining, that's the hard part, while maintaining people's understanding of the basics of it. So you can go back and actually fix whatever you need while you're still can ri ride this amazing, you know, fast mm -hmm. lightning, you know, kind of vehicle to get you from point A to point B in the cleanest way possible um for people watching if you have any questions comments concerns compliments for mr christo here and his amazing work please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section and as usual don't forget to like and subscribe thank you so much for watching thank you so much christo and i'll see you in another video take care thanks Hassan. thank you